Welcome to a video presented from my dark room, which is just actually a closet that I can easily make light height so I can do things like loading film and dealing with things in the dark. Hints in the name, dark room. Before we get started, yes, I do know I sound like a dying cat right now. I have somehow managed to catch a flu that's going around Ireland at the minute. No, it's not the one you're thinking of. I have been tested. I don't have that. I just have some normal flu that's currently killing me. Aside from the fact that I'm dying, let's get on to the topic of this video, and that is storing chemicals so that they last as long as possible and you can get the most amount of use out of those chemicals. And to start that off, let's talk about the easiest chemicals to store, the black and white chemistry. So to start off, let's talk about the stop bath and fixer for black and white chemistry because those two chemicals are the easiest to store and the easiest to manage. Now the chemicals that I actually use are the Ilford Ilfa Stop and Ilford Rapid Fixer chemicals. So these chemicals come as liquid concentrates, you know, they're just bottles of liquid that you dilute down to a working solution. And as for storage, I just store the concentrates in their original bottles. Fixer and stop baths don't really go off. So storing them as a concentrate in the original bottle is perfectly fine. However, if they do go off after an extremely long time and you use bad fixer that doesn't work, the worst case scenario is that you can just get fresh fixer and refix your film. So it won't actually destroy your film, it'll just be mildly inconvenient. Now as I said, these are the concentrates. So in order to use these, we need to dilute them down into working solutions. And here are my working solutions. You can see we've got uh, black and white stop bath and black and white fixer. So to store these I just use these one litre plastic bottles I found online. I like these ones quite a lot because they have quite a wide neck so they pour very easily very quickly and that's how I store my black and white stop bath and fixer. You know, they don't tend to go off like this, the bottles are sealed well enough, they keep the air out enough so that the chemical lasts a long enough time for me to use it all. The uh, fixer one litre will do, I believe, 24 rolls of film before it runs out of chemistry and the stop bath can easily do 15 to 20 rolls. Now when it comes to storing black and white developers, things change based on which developer you're actually storing. So for the ones that I use, which are Kodak HD110, Adotec 4 and HR Dev, along with Rodenol, I've actually found that for these developers at least, you can store the liquid concentrates in their original bottles and they pretty much never really go off. Um, these have lasted over a year in the original bottles and they're still fairly good. HC110 here I think is three years now and it's perfectly fine. Um, this bottle of Rodinol uh, I haven't actually opened yet. But I do know that Rodinol lasts a really long time. My friend has a bottle of this that's lasted four years or something opened and it still works perfectly fine. So for these liquid concentrates you can definitely just store them in the original bottle and it'll be fine. Now when it comes to powder developers, which you have to mix up the entire bag of powder into a fixed volume of water, things change quite a bit. So the powder developer that I currently work with and is my favorite developer right now is Kodak Extol. I find it to be a really, really nice developer. I'll be doing a video on it in the future. But the main issue with Kodak Extol is that it only comes in a five liter size. So you have to mix up an entire five liters of solution. And not only that, you need to keep that five liters of solution away from oxygen until the entire thing is used up. So to do that, I store it in this, which is an amber glass bottle. This is my Extol working stock. The reason I have a working stock solution is because I use a replenishment process right now. Um, I'll be explaining that in a future video, but the basic gist of the storage is when it comes to storing developers, glass bottles are the gold standard. They don't let any oxygen in to degrade your chemicals. And if you're storing a developer of any kind, including color, which we'll touch on later in the video, store them in an amber glass bottle. So this is my working stock solution of one liter. As for the rest of the solution, which is actually about four liters after you mix up and split everything down, I store it in this thing. Now, this thing is actually a wine box meant for home brewing. That in here, it's literally a bag of liquid. So this is my Extol replenisher solution. 
that I use. And you can see it's a completely sealed airtight plastic bag. And the great thing about this is that it will hold an entire five liters. You just pour it into the neck here, fit the valve in, and then you can squeeze out all the air by just opening the valve and kind of crushing the bag. And now the bag is completely air free. And you just have your solution in here and it lasts a really, really long time. I've had this in this bag now for over a year and I'm only about halfway through it. So it's lasted really well. This solution works quite well. However, it does have one massive downside and that's the fact that you're dealing with five liters of liquid in a plastic bag, which is quite difficult to handle. It's quite difficult to use. It's just kind of flobby and irritating as F to use. So I might actually move away from this in the future. One thing I actually have been looking into is using those collapsible kind of water bottle jug things for camping. So they're a collapsible kind of five liter jug for when you're going camping, you fill it up with water somewhere and then it collapses down real small for transport while it's empty. So I'm gonna be trying out one of those in the future when I finally use up this Extol replenisher and I'll be moving on to my next bag of Extol. But for now, it's gonna live in its wine box with its 18 different flaps. And that's pretty much it for black and white chemistry. But that's not where the questions are. The questions are in the next section, which is dealing with and storing color chemistry. So when it comes to developing color print film in the C41 process, I use the Fuji Hunt C41 kit. Now this is a liquid C41 kit. It can mix up five liters of solution and its capacity is around 80 to 88 rolls of film, which is a whole lot of film for one person to shoot. And that's why I needed to figure out how to store this kit really well so that it doesn't go off and it doesn't degrade over time and I end up wasting half the chemicals. Now, the reason I use this particular kit is because first off, it's very, very economical to use. I think it only cost me about 90 cent a roll to develop C41 using this kit. But the second reason I use this kit is because it is a full process kit. Now, what that means is that it has separate bleach and fixing steps. So this kit mixes up a developer, a bleach and fixer solutions that you use in that order. And it also has like a rinse step that you use to, you know, surfactants. Um, it's the same as Photoflow, but it comes as part of the kit. It's sometimes referred to as a stabilizer. So this is how I store my C41 chemistry. Um, as for the easy ones, the fixer can just be stored in its original bottle. I found that it doesn't go off at all. I've had this kit for about a year now, and all of the chemicals in here are perfect. They haven't degraded one little bit from storage. So fixer, just stored in its original bottle, great. Next up we have the bleach, um, probably the worst chemical in the kit to be dealing with, but the bleach can be just stored once again in its original bottle, it's perfectly fine, it doesn't actually go off with oxygen in the air. The real problem with this kit and storage is when you're dealing with the developer. And if you look up storage of this kit, the one issue everybody has, and I've ran into this problem myself on my previous kit, is that the part C goes off extremely quickly with oxygen. Here you can see the part C of the old kit, which has just completely turned to like a black sludge, which is now useless. So if you see this, uh, don't use it. Instead, store your chemicals properly and you won't end up in this problem and wasting half your kit. And these kits aren't cheap, so it can be a pain in the butt. So I need to figure out how to store this. And the part B can also go off quite easily as well if you're not careful. So in order to store this kit, what I did was when I opened the kit up, I took my developer part C, which is a 90 mil bottle, and then I split it into two 50 mil glass bottles. So here we have part C and part C. I filled the first one up to the very, very brim, sealed it tightly, capped it. And this will keep this chemical as fresh and clean until I open it. This is the one I've been mixing my working solutions from. And as you can see, it's still perfectly clear and there's no degradation of the chemical at all. Over a year since I've opened the kit. So if you store your part C properly in little glass bottles, it'll last basically forever. The other part of the C41 developer that you need to be aware of is part B, which is this one here. And I stored this one on its own in a glass bottle as well. 
Apparently this can actually last quite a long time in its original bottle, but just to be safe, I just put it all into one amber glass bottle. And then for part A, it's just stored in its original bottle. It doesn't really go off at all. And then lastly, we have the stabilizer. It's obviously the most stable chemical, not because the stabilizer, just because there's no reactants in this. It's just a little bit of dishwasher soap, basically. And it's just stored in its original bottle as well. And that's it. So that's how you store the C41 concentrates. What about the C41 working solutions? Well, to store those, I actually just use the Jobo bottles, which I've actually found store color chemistry really, really well, and it lasts a really long time in its working solution form. Now, these bottles are the 600 ml bottles, which are for the CPE processors. I have a CPE too, so that's what I use to store and heat the chemicals in, you know, they just slot into the machine, they get heated, it all works out really nicely. So yeah, these are what I store my C41 chemicals in. But as we all know, C41 is, you know, baby's first color developer. Real men develop their own E6, and that's what we're talking about next. So when it comes to E6 developing, this is the kit I use, which is the Fuji Hunt Chrome 6X E6 processing kit. Now this, once again, like the C41 kit, is a five liter kit. And like the C41 kit, this is a full process kit, which means it has all six chemical steps. It has your developer, your reversal bath, your color developer, your conditioner, also referred to as pre-bleach, your bleach, your fixer, and your rinse steps. So you've got six chemical steps and one rinsing step to deal with. And most of those steps also go off really easily, so we need to figure out how to store them. Uh, the easiest ones to store, once again, are the bleach, the fixer. So these are just stored in their original bottles that they come in. Bleach lasts basically forever in this bottle, so does the fixer. As for the rest of the chemicals, all of the bottles in here are empty. So the reason all of the bottles are empty is because I have stored all of the concentrates that can go off in amber glass bottles, just like the C41 kit. The only issue is there's a lot more of them. So when I first opened up the kit, I split all of the chemicals into bottles half the size of the original. So if we take out our first developer bottle, it is a one liter bottle. And as you can see, it's all kind of got a brown color in there. So the way I stored it was I opened up my first developer, poured it into this 500 ml bottle until it was completely full. And then I done the same again to this bottle until I ran out of solution. And then I just worked my way through this, developing all the slide film I want to develop. And now I'm actually about halfway through this kit. So I've developed around 22 rolls of film. Uh, the kit's capacity, by the way, is about 44 rolls. And as you can see here, the first developer conch uh, for concentrate is still unopened and it's still perfectly clear if you hold it up to the light, it hasn't changed color at all since I put it into this bottle. Now, when it comes to the other solutions, for example, uh, color developer, part one and part two concentrates, these are stored here, both of these are full. Um, these are stored, by the way, on the 5th of March this year. Here we have the pre-bleach. This is a 250 ml bottle that I bought. All these glass bottles were bought from Amazon, uh, from the same manufacturer. So as you can see for the pre-bleach, we've uh, gone through one bottle and actually a tiny little bit of this bottle as well. Obviously I spilled some along the way, but as you can see, it's still, perfectly clear, same way it came from the factory in its original bottles. Uh, and then lastly, we have my reversal concentrate, uh, which is stored here. And that's half gone. So we have another bottle of reversal concentrate right here. And all these chemicals are stored like this to keep oxygen away from the concentrates. That's what's most important here. But as you can see with the E6 kit, there's a lot of chemicals you need to deal with. A lot of chemicals need to be stored properly. But if you do it right, they all last basically forever or for a really long time, like much, much longer than what the instructions say, which I think is somewhere like six weeks for most of these once you open them up. So by storing them in glass bottles, they basically last a really long time and you can develop all your E6 to your heart's content. The reason I use this particular E6 kit is because it's the full process kit with the separate bleach and fixer and color developers and reversal steps. So it does actually store really, really well. 
I tried to store a tetanal kit. Um, now I didn't use glass bottles, I used plastic bottles, which I suspect weren't the best. And it actually did get oxygen in and the, uh, and the blick step went off and the color developer started going off before I could use up the five liter tetanal kit. So I switched to the Fuji E6 kit, the five liter kit, and it's actually been great. It's worked out really, really well, and it's just been an absolute joy to use. Now, when it comes to storing the working solutions for the E6 kit, I actually just use these 600 ml Joba bottles once again. Same reason C41 kit, I can just drop these into the Jobo all at once, have them all heated up and are ready to go. Uh, as for the rinse step, once again, I use the same process as before. I use the E6 rinse in a one liter container because it's done outside of the Jobo in a separate tank system to prevent the Jobo getting clogged up and the reels getting covered in the rinse step, which can cause issues like photo flow does. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it informative. Um, I hope it filled in a few knowledge gaps for you. And that's it for me. See you next time. Oh yeah, in case you're wondering, uh, here's all the chemicals sort of spread it all over the floor right now while I was demonstrating them. And as a side note, Yes, this place does look like a meth lab at times when I'm developing film and mixing up all the chemistry. So does that. Does anybody else have this issue where HC110 seems to be able to wick its way out of the bottle continuously? Like, this bottle seems to continuously, like, have the kind of gloopy syrup come up the seam somehow and, like, leak out under the lid and get out of the way. I don't know how it does it, but I have to keep it on this piece of uh, kitchen towel, otherwise it's going to, you know, leak everywhere. Don't know if anyone else has that problem.